No, I'm like right on the dot. That's crazy. I'm usually late for my own streams, but hey, I'm I'm here. Let me know in the chat if everything's uh, working out. This is a new format I'm trying out. It's a, it's actually an experimental feature on YouTube, uh, and that would be well one the vertical format, but then also uh, the let's stream together feature on YouTube. So later in the show, about 30 minutes in, we're going to have Marty up north join. I know a lot of people miss that show. It's normally on Thursday mornings. Uh, yeah, we, we weren't able to do one this week, but but uh, we're, we'll be doing it live now. <laughs> Coming up in about a half an hour. So I, in the spirit of that, uh, I'm in Shibuya right now, and I'll be walking down to um, uh, Hachiko. Hachiko, for those that don't know, is uh, there's a dog statue. It's based on a, a true story about a dog that used to go and meet his owner every day at the station, every single day. And uh, at one point, the, the the owner of the dog passed away, but the dog still came every single day to uh, to meet people, and, and people fell in love with the dog, and it became a national uh, icon here. And there, that's that is still the meeting place here in Shibuya. Is the uh, is the audio good? Tell me in the chat if the audio is good. I, I see you guys in the chat. Actually, this vertical format makes it a lot easier for me to pay attention to what's happening in the chat. For real. It really is. Because, uh, uh, yeah, the horizontal feature is, is a lot more difficult. I'll tell you what, though. This, the phone is a lot more top-heavy uh, on the on the stand here. But, yeah, let me know. Let me know. Is the, is the audio okay? Uh, Clyde, you're awesome. Stay in Japan <laughs> or come back to Canada. I don't know what to do. Yeah, for... For everyone that, that doesn't know the situation, I, I posted it on Twitter. I've also talked about it on the on the um, on. I don't know, when did I talk? I talked about it on the live stream last week, and also uh, with with Marty uh, in previous uh, audio is great, good, good to hear. Um, but yeah, back home in Canada, just before leaving for Japan, we got uh, got a, a great phone call from the landlord saying, uh, "Yeah, you're gonna have to get out in two months." So. Yeah, that's going to be a, a big thing. I got some great advice from a lot of people saying, hey, make sure that the paperwork's all in order. Make sure that um, everything's all the, you know, I's are dotted, and the T's are crossed, all of that stuff. So that I'll be following up with. I'll make sure that all the paperwork is correct. Um, I'm, not do, I'm not moving out just by being told to move out. I'll, I'll, I'll do it with the, the correct uh, paperwork in, in place. Um, Good to know what your rights are as a tenant. That's absolutely right. Uh, this country is becoming Trudopia. It really is. It really is. Unfortunately, uh, Japan, for uh, for the most part, has gone back to normal. Um, that's that's the interesting thing. Now, a lot of people point out the fact that people wear masks in in Japan, but they always have. It's just a normal thing uh, because of. And I've been suffering from the consequences of this. Um, they, they have what they call a uh, kafun season. It's a, a hay fever season. And because of that, um, it, it's, it's actually an interesting story. So after the second world war, they wanted to foster a logging industry in Japan of all things, right? Because Japan kept buying, uh, wood from other countries, uh, Canada in particular. And so what they did was they, they planted, they cut down all these forests and they planted red cedar in a huge chunk of countryside in Japan. Uh, and then nobody wanted to be loggers. <laughs> nobody wanted to do the job. So now they just have all these giant red seed, cedar forests uh, that spread tons of pollen unnatural to the area. And a lot of people are allergic to it. It's, a, it's actually a, a pretty strong hyperallergenic. And um, yeah, it creates uh, allergy season in Japan. So it's a pretty, uh, pretty big thing uh, from post a pre pre industrial no it's post industrial but um, post war Japan industry uh, interesting sort of thing to have come from from that whole that whole thing uh, there are a lot of excitement in Canada yeah Marty's gonna fill me in on a lot of that stuff uh, I've been trying to keep track of it as much as I possibly can but I am I am on vacation I'm trying to enjoy it as much as I possibly can as well as well as like figure out what we're gonna do for a, to, a place to live. Now, the reality of the situation is I live on the west coast of British Columbia and the town that I live in, the real estate has gone through the roof. It's uh, ridiculous uh, from the 
from when we moved there. We moved there and started a life back in 2011 uh, when we left Japan. Incidentally, just after that big major earthquake. Now, we made our life there and we watched this housing market blow up. And you know, at, at the time, I, I, I wish I could time markets. I, I'd, be, I, I'd be in a lot better position because <laughs> I saw it as a bubble at the time, 10 years ago. And I thought, no way. A townhouse that's worth $200,000 is now selling for $400,000, and that's going to stay that way. Well, was I wrong? They've gone all the way up to a million dollars in that town, which is crazy. Uh, I could never have predicted that. I thought I thought the, the bubble would have popped by, by now. Um, we tried to wait it out as renters in the market, and it just didn't work out. It didn't work out. So uh, our landlord said, you got to go. Rents are going to increase by a minimum of threefold, and and that's even with the downsize. So, the reality of the situation is we can't live in that town. If we take any place, even on a temporary measure, we'll be digging into our savings every month. We'll be underwater, right? So, underwater leads to well, at what point are you just going to run out of money entirely and then have nothing to get you to the next the next place, right? You have some dust on my hat. What's going on? Some um, maybe some of that cotton, cottonwood, um, but yeah. So if it digs into our savings, and here's the thing: we don't really want to drastically change our lifestyle. Don't don't want to force my wife to have to go out and get a job, even though I have two jobs. <laughs> you know, I have two full time jobs. The wife having to go get a job would take time away from our children, and that's not something we wanna we want to bring about. So. We're not going to go down that route. We're just going to have to move house. And what we what we came to the conclusion of is, well, what's the difference between having to pack up everything, leave all our friends behind, leave all the stuff behind, and then go 50 kilometers or 5,000 kilometers? Now, we have the choice of living here in Japan. But we also have the choice of living in the United States because I'm an American citizen. So... That's, you know, move to Alberta. I keep hearing that, move to Alberta. But Alberta's not doing so hot either. I mean, not hot, that's for sure. But it's, uh, it's also, uh, it's, over, it's overinflated. It's, it's, it's hugely overinflated. And what, what do you, what's, what's the end game on that? Now, are we, are we going to see a, a bubble pop and then the prices of house fall, houses fall? I don't know. Are we going to see uh, builders making cheap homes? Nope. Uh, why would they? Uh, the regulation, regulatory uh, situation is way too expensive to build homes. Uh, it's um, it's way, uh, building materials is way too expensive. So um, with that being said, and then also the, the pressure of this massive immigration in Canada, uh, it seems like there's no end in sight for, for that. So I see uh, uh, Kukum in the chat saying, Florida, Florida is a possibility. So is Texas. Uh, so are a few other options. So we're looking at it. We're looking into it. And um, we'll have to, um, in fact, make a decision rather quickly because um, that's the thing. The, the longer we wait, the more it cuts into our savings. It's, uh, it's really a, a sad thing. Uh, what is this? Uh, James Corbett. If you think it's best, stay in Japan and do what James Corbett does. Hang out with him. I'd love to hang out with him. I've never actually met him. I've, I've been on his. Uh, I've been on his publication <laughs> during the convoy. Uh, he shared some of my uh, videos back in those days. But um, what's that? What's Philippines? Personally, I'm heading to the Philippines and Thailand. Oh, good luck. Good luck. A lot of people will end up in those areas. I don't have any cultural or um or any other reason to want to go there in particular yeah if i ended up in asia it'd be in japan this that's, that's where that's where our um the you know my half of my family is from japan so uh that being like obviously my wife and half half of my kids uh Clyde, first time catching you stream. How are you doing today? I'm, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. And I've been staying put. Why don't we, um, we, should, get, we should get moving because at some point 
we're going to meet up with Marty. Marty's going to jump into the live stream and, uh, and then we're going to do that. So let's, let's get moving. We're going to head over to Hachiko, which is the meeting place. I just thought it would be kind of, um, worthwhile to do it that way. Incidentally, uh, connections are fantastic here. 5G all day long. <laughs> it's, it's great. It's great. It works out. It works out. And I've been getting a lot of exercise because you just you end up walking a lot in Japan. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, you take the trains to here or there, but you're, you know, walking in neighborhoods and doing all kinds of stuff. So it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Florida, Texas, or Japan, look for a tax-friendly state. That's, that, that, is the, um, that is the thing. So if we live in Japan, taxes are much better than Canada. Uh, if we live in the United States, taxes are much better than Canada. Taxes are horrendous in Canada. It's, it's unbelievable. And I'm, I mean, I'm preaching to the choir here. You guys all know about it because you all, most of you, in the chat today are, are paying those taxes. It's just absolutely insane. Are you a PM? I don't know what that means. Uh, you can almost say everything is 15 minutes away. Suspicious lol. That's, you know, what's funny is like, you know, there's this whole idea of 15 minute cities and it really is just like, how do we enslave people? But I think the arguments against it the, well, I mean, the people that are giving the arguments against it are, are arguing the wrong thing. It's kind of like, um, you know, when people were arguing for legal pot, they would always, like, I'd always hear this argument, well, we, oh, alcohol is worse. <laughs> like, no, that's not the best argument for the case. I mean, don't say, um, you know, we should lift a prohibition on a thing because something else is worse, and the prohibition was worse on, on alcohol anyway. I mean, I'm just getting into bad argumentation. Um, but the, the idea behind 15-minute cities, like a lot of people that are arguing against them are giving bad arguments. I mean, don't, don't argue against convenience. I mean, everybody wants convenience. That's fine. Um, but the reality of the situation in, so say, for example, in, in Japan, in, even in Tokyo, it is so convenient here. But... They'll never lock people down to 15-minute zones. It's just like, that's ridiculous. And, and why would they, in fact? Because there's no real incentive to uh, restrict people to particular zones. The different areas of town have uh, different niches. And, and it's, uh, yeah, I often, I'll often travel out and go to the different places. So I just don't, I don't ever see 15-minute city stuff taking off in in Japan because everybody loves going and visiting all these different places uh, and the train system is just fantastic you just jump on and it's quite reasonable that has got to be one of the biggest kebab things I've ever seen I guess that's what they look like when they first start look at that thing it's massive it? <laughs> it's lots of kebab shops in um, in Tokyo I guess a big Turkish community um and they, they're very proud of it. <laughs> I remember one time I was in a kebab shop and I, I mentioned uh, I mentioned to a friend of mine how I miss uh, having gyros because I grew up in southwestern Ontario and there's a lot of Greek uh, community there. <laughs> and the shop owner overheard me and she got so offended and she started shouting at me. <laughs> said, no, this is Turkish. And I said, I know. It's great. And so is other food, you know, whatever. Chill out. I thought that was hilarious. Um, but yeah, that was, that was an experience. Uh, what are we doing here? Maxwell had a silver hammer, too. I, I know the song. I know the song. Is that based on, a, uh, on any kind of true story or anything like that? I'm, I've always wondered that. I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Anyway, just wandering through uh, Shibuya here. Uh, for anyone who tuned in, to hit a put a one in the in the chat if you uh, were around two weeks ago for the walkabout stream. Put a two if you weren't around for that, because uh, give me a judge. Uh, it'll, it'll help me uh, gauge uh, what you guys have and haven't seen. 
So one, if you were in that chat, and a, a two, if you were not. This is one of these uh, funny little secret hidden things. You can barely see it, but oh, there's a Taco Bell over there. <laughs> it's like the only one I know of in Tokyo. It's hilarious. Okay, a lot of you were in here, but there's a bunch of you that weren't. Glad we are dedicated. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. 138. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Excuse me. So I, I was hoping uh, when Marty comes in, I'm going to have another chat about the whole PPC thing that happened uh, over the over the week. Apparently he's uh, unblocked a bunch of them, but he's just he's gone to muting a bunch of the people. For those that don't know, um, you don't pay attention on Twitter or what they call X now. Um, by the way, it's a big chain here called Don Quixote. <laughs> I don't know what, why why they chose that name, uh, but this is the Mega Dome, Mega Donkey. That's how, what it says there in, uh, in Katakana. Donkey. <laughs> uh, rainbow flag was there oh yeah yeah there was i guess but not not the um not the one the chevron i guess Ah, oh, daniel patrick with a 499 super chat fyi mike from red bar is streaming right now Showing leaked docs exposing you for uh, what being into feet and other stuff. Gross. I hope it's not true. Who is that, Mike from Red Bar? Exposing exposing me <laughs> for being into feet? No, yeah, uh, no, not into that stuff. No thanks. I don't even know who that is. That's hilarious. Some people, uh, some people try to make a name for themselves by uh, trying to tear down other people's name. <laughs> I hope that's not true. Anyway, uh, yeah, not, not, not in the least worried about that. So I did confirm one thing that I did confirm just the other day, and that's um, this place right here. There, <laughs> you, you can barely tell what the business is, but it is that yak story. Uh, so if you were paying attention to the last live stream. Um, that was the one I was looking for, and it is fantastic. And yakitori, um, for those that don't know, is a type of just like they look like kebabs, like little skewers, uh, but it's all chicken. It's all chicken. And the good restaurants, they'll use every part of the chicken. So like they even do what what you'd call the awful, like uh, the liver, the hearts, the um, all, all the stuff, and uh, it's fantastic. Uh, potato girl, he he, with a five dollar super chat. Moved to North Carolina or Utah, not bad prices. Yeah, I, I've been hearing that. I don't know, but yeah, I don't know about Utah. <laughs> Maybe if I was a Mormon, apparently that place is great for that. Um, no, I'm I'm just I'm just joking. I'm 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 not dogging on Utah. Uh, we we're looking into some places, but. I think we're, we're looking more south than that at this point. But we'll see. We'll see. It, it might be one of those things where we give uh, the U.S. a go, and if, if uh, that doesn't work out, we all, we'll end up over here. Uh, Idaho is based and close. Yeah. Yeah. And Utah has really good off-roading. From what I hear, I'd love to get back into off-roading if I if I could. That would be that would be really cool, actually. Okay, we're about ten minutes from Marty getting here, so I better head on over to Hachiko. That's uh, that's a thing. Uh, are you not worried about the draft in the U.S.? Uh, nope. No, I'm not worried about the draft. I mean, I'm not eligible for the draft. I mean, 
my children wouldn't be. Uh, at least not at this age. Um, they would have to. My my children are quite quite small. If they like I said, we try out the U.S. and if it doesn't work out, then it becomes one of those. Yeah, I guess we're not going. You know, we're not going to stay in there, sort of things. So I I'm not I'm not uh, the draft. The draft is one of those things. I don't think they'll bring it back. It's uh, there's not enough um, not enough fervor for people to accept that. Not like there was. Um, you know, during the Vietnam era, I I see that as like a, a, a fatal disaster for a U.S. government to try to pull that one off. I just don't think that would that would fly. Upshot. Don't know what that means. Uh, no nuke. War makes the draft defunct. Uh, do you like to live in Ontario? I moved away from Ontario when I was younger and I was happy to get out of Ontario. And uh, I could never see myself moving back there. No, I just couldn't see that. Uh, I have I have siblings that still live in Ontario. And, uh, you know, they, they're still living. <laughs> I don't know how great the place is. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call it uh, something awesome. Uh, but I mean, there's there's great. There are good things about it. Um, Toronto is not one of them. That's for sure. <laughs> Penny D with a five dollars super chat. Uh, we could have a blackout here. Hopefully, I don't get. Uh, hopefully, I don't lose you. Hi, chat and Marty. When he gets there. Uh, crazy blackouts. Why? Why would you have a blackout? Steve's Hyde with a ten dollars super chat. All the best, Clyde. Uh, here's some for ramen. And Sapporo, I hate working Saturdays. I'll check it out in the morning. Oh, well, if you're still still listening at this point, I am going for ramen, so I am going to take that $10, and I'm going to put it towards that. There's a place um, over by my friend's house in, uh, in an area called Daimo, and uh, I'll be going for I'll be going for that in, uh, in, a, in a bunch of hours, but today. Today, I'm, I'm going for ramen. I haven't had ramen since I got here, <laughs> which is crazy. Because you think, uh, typically, I'd, I'd have been a bunch of times. But, yeah, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go tonight for ramen. And then we're going to hang out and have uh, a lot of, too many beers, probably. Too many beers. Too many wobbly pops. But, yeah, it's so weird. It's so weird because, uh, you know, live streaming early in the morning here. And, uh, and it's... Uh, it's, it's wobbly pop hour in, in Canada. Not here. Not yet. <laughs> not just at this point. Okay, it's starting to get busy. And mind you, it is Saturday morning here. So everybody's off. Everybody's coming to this area to, uh, to, uh, to have fun. Lots of seafood, Clyde. Yes, lots of seafood. Actually, um, yesterday we had... We had a special order sent to the in-laws' house from a friend of ours who who has a um, who has a like a, a I, I want to call it a classical place in Kamakura, which Kamakura is a beautiful place if you've never been or if you've never heard of it. Look it up; it's it's gorgeous. At one point, it was the capital of Japan, uh, as as was a bunch of other cities. Uh, as you may know, uh, Kyoto at one point was the capital of Japan. Osaka was one, at one point. Now Tokyo is the capital, and it has been for um, a few hundred years or, or so. But Kamakura is not that far away, and uh, everything's very um, old school and traditional. They have like the, the giant Buddha statue and all this other stuff. It's really cool. But um, this one restaurant you go to, they have a very particular way of doing fish. It's really good. Um, but it's, a, it's an old school technique, right? What they would do is they would dry the fish out, salt and dry them. And then that was a, a way of storing it. And you think like, okay, well, as soon as you salt and dry it, it's just jerky at that point. No, it's not. And that's the beauty of it. That's the beautiful part about the way they make this fish is they dry it out and then it's, it's preserved, but then they rehydrate it. They rehydrate it and it's like it's fresh again. It's crazy. But it's got like the, the perfect salty uh, flavor to it. 
and they do they do these like like butterfly fillet, and it's beautiful, and it makes it easy to take the little bones out. Um, but my favorite one is uh, it's called hoke, H O K K E, fish, and it is just crazy. So right now I'm at Hachiko, and I'm <laughs> I'm gonna show it in the background. I'm at Hachiko, and this is a perfect time to have a meeting because I'm gonna bring in the person that came in to meet. So let's let's get on with this. Add. I'm just hoping for yeah. I'm just hoping all the audio works. Marty, can you hear me? You're perfectly. Can you hear me? I can. I can. It's coming in just great. I got you in my earpiece, and and I was like wondering if this is gonna mess up or what. But Marty, check this out. So I have you at this meeting place. It's a famous meeting place in Tokyo, and I walked over here just for the timing that you said you're coming in, and it's called Hachiko. And there's a, a statue behind me here, and people line up all day long to yeah. to take their picture with Hachiko. It's a, a famous dog that um, the this this guy he, he would come to Shibuya Station every day. Like this is like over a hundred years ago, and the dog would meet him at the station, and he loved this dog, right? Well, one day the the owner died, but the dog would show up still every day, and people would come and feed this dog, and the dog would go out, bugger off, and do his own thing. And then come to the station at the same time every day, and people would meet this dog. It became a famous story in Japan, and so they made a statue. And this is a meeting place where people come to meet. It's it's really cool, dude. This is this is so awesome. I mean, like technology is amazing. Like you're in Japan, I'm in Calgary. We're like twelve time zones apart, and we're like live. This is wild. <laughs> it is wild. It is wild. I'm uh, I, I thought this would be a, a fun way to end the trip. Uh, a little piece of content that we can put out there. Now you, you could probably see how crazy busy this is right now, and um, as well as the sakura has been in bloom, and it's it's kind of nearing the end of its bloom cycle, and the uh, the green foliage is starting to grow on the on the um, the cherry trees. It's amazing. This is it's, what an awesome time to be here. So so by by local standards, how busy is it right now? Like, is that a typical crowd? Like, it's that busy all the time? Uh, yes. Well, especially for a Saturday. Now, right now, you can actually walk through the square here. Um, later in the day, you won't be able to. I mean, it's just like, uh, you know, you squeeze them to get through. This is the famous crossing. I'll, I'll turn the camera around so you can see it. This is a famous crossing for uh, Shibuya. It's a five-way crossing. And, and people come here and do time lapses and all that stuff here all the time. Uh, it's famous. You'll see social media influencers jumping into the middle of the road to do their little social media influence bit. That's the crossing from, uh, what was the movie with uh, Nicolas Cage and uh, Johansson there years ago? Uh, Lost in Translation. That's a famous crossing from that movie, I think. Uh, that was, I think, Bill Murray in that film. Or Bill Murray, sorry. Bill, who did I say? Yeah, Bill Murray. You're right. Yeah, Nicolas Cage. <laughs> he's a... He's a uh, Great actor. I said Cage because I just watched a Nicolas Cage movie. Nicolas Cage is still doing B movies. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Yeah. But yeah, it's well, crazy. It's, it's it's hectic. But it's this is a fun walk that I like to do every time I come to, to Tokyo and do a live stream while I'm just walking along. This is the first time to do it with somebody, which is really now, interesting. How many uh, how many other influencers are around you like walking around with a camera is is common uh, in in uh, tokyo right nobody's nobody's paying attention to you or what nobody's paying attention to me it, there's people yeah. all over the street doing it um they even get like tv crews that come out and they'll be filming stuff like it's constant here wow yeah, um, obviously you're 5G right now or something like that. I mean, the quality is fantastic. We got, what, 592 people watching right now. Holy smokes, folks. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, Terry, yeah. I don't know the last, I can't get the last name. Sorry, Terry, uh, for the $2 super sticker. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Uh, yeah, no, the the 5G. So I, I bought, you, you can buy a, uh, these these SIM cards to throw on your phone. And uh, I bought a 5G one, and it's up to, I got, I got a 50 gigabyte limit for the time that I was here. I barely eaten up half of it, so that was a winning formula. There, there are some other ones where you, you, you get 4G, and it's unlimited, but I was like, ah, let's get the fast stuff. Yeah. 
Good. Well, you're missing uh, you're missing some interesting weeks, that's for sure. Have you been paying attention to what's going on in Canada, or so a bit? And this is why I'm glad to have you on, and I'm doing this uh, walkabout in Tokyo. But I want to I want to talk about what's happening in Canada because it's just crazy. It's it, it's crazy what I'm hearing right now. I mean, the, the 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 dominant story in Canada is that the the budget is due to come out next week. So the Bank of Canada or the the federal government will release their budget next week. Um, and you know, my prediction is that uh, we're going to have a six hundred billion dollar budget for for twenty twenty four with about a seventy five to hundred <laughs> billion dollar deficit. And and this week the Liberals are like. They've just scattered across the country, just making crazy announcement after crazy announcement after like they're throwing money left, right and center right now. Like it's 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 just raining money in Canada is is what is, is basically the news story right now between what I thought was Minnesota. unusual. What I thought was really yeah. unusual is the fact that, you know, normally before the budget, they don't disclose any of this stuff. It's always like a after the thing they're on. They're on campaign mode. It's crazy. Like they're telling, they're divulging all the information that's going to be in the budget before the budget yep. is even released and they can even vote on it. So what do you think their strategy is with that? Just to win uh, hearts and minds. I mean, and, and then Trudeau was on an interview, a guy named uh, Justin Lang interviewed Trudeau this week. He did about an hour long uh, interview with Trudeau and, and Trudeau, I like, Trudeau is as confident as I've ever seen him. I mean, he is literally thinks that he's going to win the next election. That's how confident he is. That's he's that, deluded. That's obviously what. Yeah, that's what his advisors are telling him, and um, he's just yeah, he's 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 been to Alberta, money, 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 and then and then and then crazy promises and crazy policies. I mean, for me, my my day today started um, criticizing like Freeland today announced that. Um, we're back to 30 year mortgages. You know, there's the government's solution to the housing crisis is to allow people to borrow longer and just pay more interest. So, you know, I did see that and I, I, I tweeted about that saying, okay, yeah, we'll just kick the can a little bit further down the road. What, what possibly could go wrong there? And, and it doesn't cost the liberals anything, right? I mean, actually they're not even the winners on this one. The banks are the winners, but, but even the banks are only short term winners because, you talk to any banker who who's been in the industry for twenty years. He doesn't want to lend money to thirty percent, but uh, to, for thirty years. And by the way, that's the other thing. I mean, the liberals can say what they want. They're not forcing the banks. They're just telling the banks that thirty years is an option. No bank in their right mind would give somebody who's stretched to the limit at twenty five years an extra five years. That's just uh, no. That's well, just asking for trouble. I just look at that as a, a short term solution. If you think that the interest rates are only going to be high in short term. So if you think yeah. that the interest rates are going to drop in six months or even a year, you can you can put your amortization rates up, set back in your mortgage uh, for the next year, and then you still get to keep your property. And yeah, it's going to hurt you in the end because you have more payments. But at the end of the day, you'll you'll be able to drop your payments down and be able to keep your home. Like that's, that's yeah. the short term thing. But I don't think that... Here's, here's my, my thought on this. The Bank of Canada is not going to change the interest rates until there's a, a market change. And the market change would be a lot of people getting out of the housing industry, out of the housing market, selling their homes, uh, prices of homes coming down because of you know flood of, uh, of these homes going onto the market. And that's not happening. They're not allowing no. that to happen. So the interest rates, they're not coming down. And if anything, they need to go up. Uh, and I still, it, I'm, I'm totally with you on that page. I, and I still think the interest rate want uh, that, that Tiff Macklin at the Bank of Canada wanted to increase the interest rate this, but he was pressured by Trudeau, like huge pressure, to to hold to to hold them steady. I mean, I and I think the Bank of Canada holding steady is just a compromise. Um, yeah, I agree. I agree with because, that. Because because what they were telegraphing was telling us absolutely the opposite, right? I mean, the Bank of Canada sent uh, between the, the, the governor and some of the senior people doing their tour, they were telegraphing left, right, and center that it's too early to, um, to, to start lowering the rates. What I, uh, what one thing I'm really uh, not excited about, but looking forward to, the Bank of Canada's annual report 
Bank of Canada is like almost any other corporation, right? Their annual reports are due in April. Last year, the Bank of Canada published their annual report on April 22nd. So I'm hoping that somewhere next week or the next two weeks that uh, Bank of Canada publishes their annual report. They, they lost $5 billion bucks. I'm betting on it. The, the Bank of Canada is going to announce a st staggering loss. Staggering. Like, staggering loss. Wow. Well, this is oh, just because they're, they're buying... They're buying back their own bonds, correct? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we got some interesting weeks coming up. Uh, when are you back? Are you back next week or the week after? I'm uh, back in like three days, two days. Oh, okay. The 15th. Time flies. So you'll be back. So you'll be here when they release the budget next week. Uh, yeah. I'm absolutely looking forward to it. The budget comes out. The budget triggers an automatic uh, conference. By the time you're back, the, the House of Commons will be having a real confidence vote for the budget. And and I asked that question today. You know, does any because there are there are chinks, uh, what they there are there are cracks in the um, in the alliance between uh, Jagmeet and Trudeau. I keep hoping that Jagmeet's going to finally sever his alliance. But so that's that's one of the super chats in there right now. Chris B from two seventy nine says Jagmeet now waffling on carbon tax rollout. Uh, I did see a video of that. A uh, jelly duck also saying uh, enjoy your time in Japan. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Um, I did see the video of Jagmeet where he, he's he's wiffle waffling on on a carbon tax, and if he would get rid of it, if he had the ability to. And he just tried not to say anything, essentially, well, well, uh, which well, he's really good at, just saying nothing with a lot of well, words. That's the, is that the video where he says, we have a plan, and then 30 seconds later, he's like, well, we, we have no plan. Have plan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Our plan's not out yet. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, there, there, there's a couple. The other interesting story, did you reach out to uh, Chase at... Um, not at, yet. Uh, Edison Motors or not yet? Not yet. So uh, that's, I, I did talk to him before the new year and he's a busy guy. And he was yeah. like, I don't know when I can work it out. And then, you know, we, we just didn't schedule anything just yet. And I said, yeah, at some point in the new year, we'll do that. And then this story came out. And when I get back, I'm going to get in touch with them as soon as I possibly can. And try to Yeah, work that's going to be a great story. I mean, it's already died down a little bit, right? Of course, the government's trying to, like, kill, bury this story. But I hope... I well, hope the funny part is I've been talking about their business for months and months and months, about a year now. And just, yeah. like, raving about if you want to if you want to go in the direction of, you know, electrifying vehicles, you want to go in the direction of, you know, a good green project, these guys are doing it. These are the guys that should be the model for how to do these things. And what the hell is the government's, you know, just, I, I didn't know the ins and outs of it at the time, but I was like, why is the government not investing in this? Or at least uh, putting positioning themselves to say like, these guys are great, you know, promote the, the work that they're doing. Turns out they were just scamming the people. They're scamming this company that's trying to do exactly what they say they're doing, they want to do. And they're doing it through the same means as, you know, well, not the same means, but similar means to what we're seeing with the Arrive Can scam. You know, you've got this business that's propped up by the government to help people with their grants. Now, they help people with their grants, you know, getting a grant from the government. And there's these massive fees for doing it. But they're the same people that are the ones to authorize the grant. And it's, it's so uh, gross. It, it's the pure definition of uh, of a conflict of interest. You can't you can't represent the grantor and the grantee, which is what the it's, it's was worse. Trying to do. It's worse, Marty. They take twenty percent of the grant money after you've already paid them the fees, and they award you the grant. They award you the grant, and yeah. the recommendation because because uh, Chase, great guy, he's always always dots his t's and uh, dots his eyes, crosses his t's. He's, he's, he's really on point, and he's made a lot of videos talking about exactly why they do the things the way that they do them, and he's fantastic. He's a great guy. Now, he was like, yeah, screw it. Why do I need this company? I'm going to save my investors money, and I'm going to just do the paperwork myself. It turns out they were just being extorted for 20% of grant money. They're supposed to be coming out of the carbon tax, which is yep. supposed to be going towards green initiatives, and it's just lining pockets of bureaucrats and 
and it's you know, I mean, this is an extortion hack. It's crazy. Yeah, well, I mean, my 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 tweet said uh, I I made a couple of tweets on this subject. I said, you know, Edison Motors checks off all the boxes, right? They're in the right space. They're in the electrical space, environmental, renewable, uh, British Columbia, small, innovative. Perhaps the only box they might not check, and the, and it'd be an easy box to check. Box to check is get get somebody from the LGBT community on your board. Like get a <laughs> you know get a get a get a get a gay guy as an engineer kind of thing if you can find one of those. So they check a off every DEI hire as they call it, right? Yeah, yeah. They check off every box except that they're not going to play the government's game. Good for them, man. Good for them. So I I hope you I hope you can uh, do a show with those guys when you get back. That'd be a good show for sure. I, I'm I'm really hoping that I will. I mean, because I I've been rooting for them regardless before yeah you know and then yeah. to hear that they're being victims of this like which, which is just it's it's a systemic issue in the canadian government at this point there is corruption yeah. everywhere it looks like it looks like you know the kremlin at this point canada is so embarrassing on the world stage to to have all these corruption scandals coming out in every facet of what they do it's like yeah. you cannot look at anything that they do and not find corruption at this point, it is gross. Well, and and, and the other story you're missing while you're gone right now, a little bit, is the uh, the inquiry into the uh, Chinese interference. I mean, it, I saw the it, tricycle thing. Yeah, I, again, I don't know why it doesn't sink Trudeau. Like, I mean, uh, you know, what's another billion? What's another billion? I guess. What's, what's another, another billion? billion? Yeah, another yeah. billion. Yeah. Just what's throw it away. Billion? What, what yeah. was it? I, I saw it today that uh, Stephen Guibault was bragging about all these new homes that are getting built in this short amount of time. And somebody, I, I think it was um, uh, on, and Nya, Nya Fanner still, I don't know how to pronounce her name correctly, but she said, she pointed out, you know, that many homes is about 220 billion megatons of CO2. <laughs> you know, <laughs> how are you the one bragging about this, Mr. Guibault? It's crazy to me. It's just yeah. insane. Yeah. So, so one of the headlines you said was, I think you're joking, but are you seriously thinking of staying or are you coming back? Like, are you <laughs> no, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Uh, but, but the thoughts of living here are, they're up there. They're up there. Yeah. We're, we're looking yeah. at some of these. So there's a few different options for, for people who do have a right to live and work here in Japan um, and those options being that there, there are uh, there's this phenomena in Japan I can't remember the name of it again in Japanese but it's, it's basically just abandoned homes so they have these homes that are just abandoned everywhere and the government doesn't know what to do with them um, so they're they're basically just giving them away and they're all over the place they're even in Tokyo it's crazy wow so you can pick up these homes for like dirt cheap and then you just rental them. Like there, there are some guys that are renovating and then renting them out, and they're making businesses out of it. It's crazy. Like and and it's it's it, it's lucrative. Let's just say that. And, like if you know and, if you're a handy when, guy, you could do it. Yeah, and when you come back, we'll we'll have a show because near and dear to me. I, I you know you I think you know this now, but I'm helping my daughter find a place. So my you know my daughter is uh, tired of renting, so I'm trying to help her. And boy, I'm, I'm getting discouraged real quick because um, we've gone to look at four places. And the last one we looked at, while we were looking at it, there was four other people that showed up to look at the same place. So there's bidding wars on properties here. It's, uh, it's Is there anything like this, Marty? No, no. You're an, no. You're an engineer. I, I think you would appreciate this. So this road intersects with this road here. Yeah. And there's just this wedge of a building. It's <laughs> you see these all over the place. It's like this tiny little wedge of a building. Here, I'll flip the camera around. I, I, I I've never been to Japan. Uh, well, I've been to Japan. I've been to the airport. The uh, Miera is that the name of the airport? I've been to the airport, but um, yeah, Narita. Yeah, I, I my impression of Japan, I, I think, is correct. I mean, it's based maybe on myth a little bit, but. They're 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 sophisticated engineers. They're they're organized. They're structured. They're polite. I, I I bet you if I'm if I was walking around like you are right now, I'd be in awe at everything I'm seeing. 
I'll tell you one thing you'd be in awe about is that, you know, they are very strict about a lot of things, but there are a lot of things where they're just like, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever, do what you got to do. You know, you need a bathroom for your, your patrons. Yeah, just make a water closet in that corner. Whatever, do it. They don't nitpick businesses about this kind of stuff, which makes it reasonable. It's a reasonable way of saying like, okay, well, I, I need to, I need to run business. And they're like, yeah, I get it. I get it. It's expensive. You only have this much space. Do what you got to do. Right. That's it. We're in Canada. They'll put you out of business. <laughs> they don't care. Yeah. No, I, 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 weirdly, that's another topic I talked about this week. I, I made a list of permits we need in Canada and like, in our day-to-day -day lives, man, because what led it, to, you know, I got a drone, right? I'm, I was, I've been flying a drone. I got a drone. I, I, I wanted to fly my drone at one of the tax protests, and I thought, ah, oh, fuck, don't bring, don't bring the drone at the protest. You're just giving the guys an extra excuse to stop you. So I went yeah. and got my permit for my drone. But in the process of getting my permit for my drone. And I talked about it and people were like, why'd you get a permit? I'm like, yeah, welcome to Canada. Welcome to Canada. I need a permit to fly a toy. Like I need, yeah, a, need permission yeah. for everything. It's I stupid. need permission for everything. I don't yeah. know if you, did you catch my reply? You had a lot of replies to that. Which one was yours? So what I said was uh, turn the question around on its head. Cause you were asking, yeah. is this indicative of a free society? And I said, well, turn, turn that question around. You've got your answer right there. The idea that anything that you would do on your own free will, you first have to have permission to do, negates the the idea of you being able to. You knew, and I'm talking express permission, not not even like, not even just general permission, express permission, licensing, all of this stuff. You, how would you define that? Except in in the term that you're ruled over by authority, and what is that? Authoritarianism. There's no other way of, of describing it. Totally. I mean, I, 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 and I gave examples to people like people. Yeah. People tried to make the claim that uh, we're a civilized society and we need some structure. Yes. We need some structure. Sure. Like I can, I can, but, I can, I can accept that premise. Sure. And so structure is a good example of structure is a set of street lights. So we all agree to follow a set of street lights. When it's red, you stop. When it's green, you go. But do I need to go one step farther and and lice and give you permission to drive? You know. So, and and I was giving very specific examples. I I I actually need a permit to cut a tree on my property. I own the land. I own my own land. But I need a permit to cut a tree on my property. Like, so well, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll cut in. I'll cut in with with something about the licensing to drive on roads. I think what what is done there is by going through the licensing body, you're you're assuming responsibility for uh, things and the rules of the road. And uh, just got, somebody just did a peck on me, <laughs> just stopped in the middle of a spot, and I had to dodge. Um, but uh, yeah, you, you're you're assuming at that point that. I know what the rules are of the road, and I will I'll I'll abide by those rules. And if I break those rules, then I'm like you know then I'm liable to fines or things like that. So I think, like on a legal structure, licensing for driving on roads, there there's there's an argument to, there's an argument for it. Yeah, and 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 I along that line of thought, I would I would perhaps change the language, right? I wouldn't call it permission. Uh, you know, when I'm giving you a permit to drive. Perhaps it'd be better worded if it says, "I'm giving you uh, a document that acknowledges that, or that that certifies that you understand the rules, or acknowledges, you know, sign here that you understand the rules." I'm not giving Assumption you permission of liability. Yeah. I would call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a. Uh, we're we're past that. <laughs> we're past. No, that. we're way past that. We're way past. We're talking. We're talking. You know, you can't. You can't cut a new dryer vent in your wall without calling calling up your local municipality and saying, like, I'm going to put a dryer vent in the wall. Oh, well, why do you want to do that? Why is it any of your business? Shut up. Yeah. Just, you know, give me the permit. So, I, you know, at the end of the day, the way I've, I've practiced is, uh, you know, it's easier to ask for forgiveness than it is to ask for permission. You know, yeah. a lot of times and, you know, sometimes it'll come down on you hard if you put down a structure, you know, this, 
You're supposed to have a permit for a permanent structure. So you dance around the rules. You see a lot of it here in, in Japan, and they just turn a blind eye to it. I, I love that fact. That, like, there's, there's regulation. There's regulation for good reason. So, for example, um, uh, earthquakes. By the way, I'm in, I'm in an uh, area called Harajuku. This is going to get really busy. In a um, but, you know, they have earthquakes in Japan. So, you know, building code needs to be up to snuff when it comes to that. But, and, you know, there, there's electrical code. You don't want flyers. But then there's a lot of leeway when it comes to like, ah, oh, well, you're building a, you're building a restaurant. We're not gonna, we're not gonna nickel and dime you on like how you put your sink in and how you put your boiling pots and stuff. Like there's, so there's a lot of hole in the wall uh, ramen shops that are steamed out half the time. You go inside, and your your glasses fog up, and it's hilarious. It's kind of it yeah. adds to the character of it, but it wouldn't fly in Canada ever. So, so Clyde, I'm noticing a lot of uh, what I would say is English language on the walls. I mean, uh, give us a synopsis. What, 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 oh, what's yeah. going on? So this is like the fashion district. So you'll see a lot of uh, like pretty girls and skimpy things. Um, aim because like aim right feel. behind you it says sale. Like right behind you right now it says sale. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they so all know what that English means. Is there's, there's a lot of like, or... oh, English is super common, super common. Or even just like uh, English, uh, like common characters to spell Japanese words. Dorayaki. Yeah. Doray, dorayaki is um, uh, these snacks. It's, uh, it's like basically two little, um, uh, two tiny pancakes with something in the middle. Uh, but yeah, they'll use, they'll use uh, what they call romaji, Roman characters to spell out certain words. And then... You know, for a lot of a lot of businesses and stuff, it's it's cool to have uh, English names for stuff. Yeah, it's like it's more hip. Like this place, I love it. Happy sauce. So and, and then this yeah, this is Justin Trudeau's That's, place, right? There you go. So so <laughs> here in uh, here in North America, we'll have a lot of Canadians or whatever. We'll put a chi or Japanese or Chinese symbols as a tattoo. Do the Japanese put something in English as a tattoo? Or not? <laughs> Maybe I don't think Do so. Out but in, but you will see like similar. Letter. So you see other similar funny things where it, like it, in, <laughs> um, so you'll see other things where just you know the context they didn't quite get it, but it's funny for a native English speaker. Like check out the name of this restaurant here. It's called Strawberry Fetish. Now like. If you open that up, if you open that up in Canada, yeah, not gonna fly, right? It's not gonna fly. But here, it's like the connotations, it, it's lost. It's lost. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I, had these, awesome. I, had these, I had these kids here. They they thought I was filming them, but I, I was like, no, no, no. I'm filming myself here. Find somebody and just speak Japanese to somebody. Show us all how that. Like, can you just bump into somebody and ask them a question? Just just it's, pretend you're a tourist of, and ask somebody a question. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of weird and rude, but I mean, if I if I have an opportunity to ask somebody something, I will, I will. Or or if we find like um a little food stand, I could I could use something to eat if the line's not too huge. Or get a drink. It's quite busy here. Yeah. Uh, actually, to, to be honest, Glad, I'm gonna have to bugger off pretty quick here. I got about two, three more minutes. It's uh, it's uh, it's a. This is awesome. I wish we could do this. I, I'm impressed. We need to do this maybe one more time before you leave. But I can't. Uh, can't. This is. Th this will be the last uh, thing that I put out. Uh, is and it? Then we, we're, yeah, we're really busy in the next couple of days to to get ourselves home. It's quite. It's quite an ordeal to uh, to travel all the way across the planet with uh, two kids. <laughs> yeah, because uh, my my in laws are here, so they they just landed from Costa Rica, so I gotta go spend a little bit of time with the family. I'm sure oh yeah, yeah, no problem. Figured it out. Marty's already having a Ryan Coke. It's Saturday, folks. <laughs> or is it Friday? No, it's Friday. It's Saturday morning here. Yeah, it's yeah, Friday it's for you. Yeah, yeah, it's Friday night. Yeah, over here it's Saturday morning. So it's I mean it's it's almost midday. It's uh eleven thirty. And uh, <laughs> it's busy as all hell. This is impressive. You know, I, I just got to make this quick comment. Like um, a couple of weeks ago, um, 
the you know there's there's a police officer in Ottawa, uh, Detective Gruss. She's having a trial, and it got very popular. Lots of people are going. So the Ottawa police tried to move the trial outside of the main core, went to the suburbs of Ottawa, hoping that it would be less people would drive there. There were still a hundred people who showed up, and so the police used the ex the court used the excuse. That, um, people said, "Can you can you can you?" Um, uh, showcase the court via Zoom or something, and the court made all sorts of bullshit excuses like we can't do it, we don't have the technology. Bullshit, right? Whatever. So that was an attempt. I mean, look at us court. right now. <laughs> That's what that, that's my point. Like you and I are interacting halfway around the world, having a perfectly valid conversation, and then you got a court who's trying to use uh, technology and lack of as an excuse to not. Um, broadcast uh, uh, proceedings. Oh, by the way, speaking of weird events, I don't know what made me think of this. Did you guys hear in Japan OJ Simpson died this week? Today? Yeah, I, I did hear that. I heard uh, I heard it was cancer. But cancer came out and said I didn't do it. <laughs> I wonder if you... Yeah, anyways. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have any more jokes. Uh, yeah. yeah, OJ. OJ, uh, yeah, he's uh, he bit it. Uh, apparently, apparently he was, uh, he was up to date. Let's just say he was really up to date and he was looking fine not too long ago. And, uh, all of a sudden, all of a sudden not doing so hot, but at the same time, you know, you look at other celebrities, like say, for example, uh, um, uh, Norm Macdonald. So Norm Macdonald, he never told anyone that he had cancer. He, uh, he didn't want that because he didn't want that to be the, the conversation piece because then you just can't get away from that. So he told nobody and then just suddenly he was gone and that was it. And we're, we're all without Norm Macdonald now. I, he's he, one, of my, he's one of my favorite comedians of all time, man. I mean, and not only because he's Canadian, but he was different, man. He was a pioneer. He... Yeah, this is awesome. I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking down at the screen. The technology is streaming live. I don't. Are you getting a little bit less um, super chats than usual, or is that because they're not showing up? I'm not sure how that works, I, but uh, I think it might just be because Canada's poor anymore, man. <laughs> <laughs> the carbon tax just went up, and a lot of people are getting hit. I, uh, <laughs> I think that's that's the only thing I can. Uh, I can uh, attribute that to because yeah no no nothing else is different uh, when it comes to the live stream and there's there's quite a lot of people in the in the chat we got 723 people watching right now now our my live streams were getting up there quite a bit into some pretty big numbers at one point um, but here here's the thing in how YouTube works is after a while if if you haven't uh, if you haven't posted content in a while. The recommendations slow down so you know a few weeks ago i might have had 1500 people in the chat there's 780 but there, there are so many people that that, that um they, they put that time aside because i stream at the same time every week so they know they know when it's going to happen and and they're there and i can see a lot of people commenting about that in the chat you know yeah somebody just said you missed their second super chat so sorry chris b um Let's acknowledge Chris B. <laughs> oh yeah, here it is. Uh, he says for two seventy nine, anywhere but Canada is is best option now. So that's the thing. So yeah, kind of getting into that. Uh, you know, we're losing our place. We're gonna make sure that we we do all the legitimate stuff uh, as 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 it comes to like when I get back. I'm gonna make sure I got a uh, like a proper notice, government form. And, uh, and if I didn't, then I'll, I'll let my landlord know that that's required before before we just like leave, kind of thing. And uh, and then it's then it's uh, figure out where we're gonna go next. Not sure yet. Hey, hey, Clyde, did did you get anywhere with your landlord on um, on the fact that you have young kids that are in school or homeschool? Did he cut you a slack for that, or did he is he still sticking to the same? Uh, vacancy date well he hasn't he hasn't made any statements um about it so what i'm uh what i'm what i'm expecting is when i get there in my mailbox either there's registered mail with the official 
uh, paperwork to have us, you know, booted from the place. And if it was just him, you know, expecting that we would just leave because he asked us to, I'm going to call him and say, sorry, man, you're going to have to do it officially. Yeah. And that'll buy us another month there. Yeah, no, because I, I remember you and I talked about that probably two, three weeks ago when you first let me know the news. And I, I couldn't find a, a specific clause in BC. The clause does exist in other provinces. I think it exists in Manitoba. But, you you know, um, regardless of the of the notice period, you can't. You can't evict somebody who has school age children. That's before the school year ends. So, in you know, I was thinking of your case specifically. I mean, if the guy says, you know, I'm, I'm giving you notice in your last day of whatever, May 1st, and your kids are in school till June 1st, that's completely ridiculous. Almost any, any uh, landlording um, review board would stand behind you. Evicting somebody w while kids are still in school is an unnecessary hardship for sure. Yeah. Now, like he, he said that it's, it's because he's moving in. I want that in writing and I want that on an official document because uh, yeah. if, if you don't move in within six months, uh, you're liable for a year's rent uh, in rears to the tenant that you kicked out. So I'm just going to do everything yeah. by the book. That's that's just the way we'll have to play it. But at the end of the day, you know, at the end of the day, we do have to move. So we're trying to figure out where we're going to go next in in our town, if we stay there, essentially our rent's going to triple minimum. And that's even with downsizing. So we're going to have to leave town. We're going to have to yeah. pack up and, and go away from our friends that we've made over the years. So what's the difference between going 50 kilometers and going 5,000 kilometers? There isn't really isn't much. So the idea is let's, let's set ourselves up in somewhere we want to be, you know? And uh, that might be Texas, that might be Florida, that might be Tokyo, might, might be, be Osaka. Yeah, who knows, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll so have... where are you right now? Are you doing a lap? Uh, uh, are you getting further from from your uh, in-laws' place, or are you sort of doing a long loop to get back? What do you? How are you walking this morning? What are you doing? Oh, okay. So in-laws' place is not uh, particularly close to uh, where I started. Well, I mean, it's three stations away. Shibuya is like kind of a central area. Now I've walked up from Shibuya to a town called another neighborhood called Harajuku, which we walked through. And now we're, we're going into a place called Yoyogi. And I'll show you, there's, um, there's a park. Uh, it goes right here. And there's a temple entrance right there. Yeah. And then quite a walk through the woods. And then you get to the, the temple at Yoyogi which is a really nice one. If you look over the other way, there's the uh, the big arena where the sumo do their, their thing in Tokyo. It's quite a big thing. And then I'm walking towards uh, Yoyogi Koen, so Yoyogi Park proper. And this is where they have a lot of sakura trees, and it's just that kind of time of year. If the, if the stream starts slowing down, because there's a lot of people in the area right now, because it's like um, the, the cell towers get inundated with too many cell phones <laughs> sometimes uh, the signal gets uh crackly so i might have to turn around but it's always good to i i like this circuit i go to yoyogi park i walk around in yoyogi for a bit and then i go back to shibuya back to uh where we where we first met at hachiko and that's my usual circuit listen bud it's getting uh, i'm gonna let you go you carry on your stream you Focus on your uh, your followers. Have a great walk, man. I look forward to you back up here. We'll we got a lot to catch up politically, but we'll we'll do that next week when you're back in town. Before you take off, there's a couple of super chats, and I'm just wondering if, if maybe someone's asking you anything. Uh, Terry for five dollars says, "On terrible isn't bad if you're in a town 600 surrounded by forests and neighbors uh, are a lifeline and and family." Uh, who else here? Uh, Wendy M for six ninety nine says, "Buy your wife a really nice uh, coat and move to Alberta." <laughs> I keep getting Alberta in there. Uh, it's it's not you know you know right now it's not that great uh, trying to find a place in Alberta. Uh, no. Seize the day for two seventy nine says, "Hey YouTube, you can't trick us. We follow Clyde." <laughs> I, I guess maybe some people aren't getting their notifications. 
UG Thai for five dollars says Canada is becoming stupidly expensive. I hope you find a good place to live. I hope I find a good place to live. Um, uh, Wayne McLean for six ninety nine says good hunting, Clyde. I know things will work out for you. I, I'm sure they will. I'm not. I'm taking this as like um, this might be a, a perfectly good opportunity for me to reach the next level of uh, things in my life. Chris B for six ninety nine says Pierre should uh, declare Canada bankrupt and rain in on the billions of dollars Trudeau gave away internationally. It's money that never existed to begin with. I, there needs to be repercussions for politicians that, that spend all of our money. It's crazy. Penny D with a $10 super chat says, what about the house in New Brunswick? The houses are large and at a good price. Do I want to live in New Brunswick or do I want to live in Texas? That's really the question. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, hard, it's hard to say that. You got a lot of uh, Alberta followers. I've seen the comments. Lots of people are saying, "Come to Alberta." I I had agreed, come to Alberta, but that's me being selfish. I, I you know, I it's it, it's not ideal. I, I live here because of family. If you don't live, if you don't have family here, don't come here. Don't come here. So, here here's one of the things that I was thinking as well is uh, if I move to the U.S., I can be a beacon for people to to talk about what's happening in Canada. To what's happening in Canada, why this is a national security issue for the United States of America, why this is a big problem for America, and America needs to pay attention to what's happening to one of their, one of, you know, a, a big trading partner, not, not their biggest, it's a, they're our biggest trading partner, but we're not their biggest trading partner, but we're, we're their neighbor. We share a huge border with them. Why, why would they be so, you know, unaware of what's happening when it comes to that? So, I think if I move to the United States, either Texas, Florida, that kind of thing, I could be a bastion for Canada, Canadian uh, issues for the American people. I think that would be a great idea. You got a funny comment from a guy named Don Boulay saying, Marty, you'll never get a job with Alberta tourism. Trust me, if, if anybody knows Marty, I've been actually slamming Alberta. In public, I always slam Alberta. I don't want anybody coming here. Like, it's the worst... I actually promote I promote BC all the time. I'm like, don't come here, man. We have lousy winters. Go to BC. They got beautiful mountains, beautiful temperatures. Go to BC, folks. <laughs> crowd up, crowd up our places. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, walking trails in British Columbia are pretty uh yeah. <laughs> pretty packed. That's that's for sure. All right, bud. I'm gonna I'm gonna sign out now. But uh, it was a good chat, man. Keep going. Keep keep your chat going. Keep entertaining. Absolutely. Your super chats, and we'll. Thanks up. for doing this, Marty. Yeah. It was a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, looking forward to doing it again sometime. Like I'll like one of these. The, I'll do one of these now. I'm gonna have to get a fancy cell dish or satellite phone. I'm everybody's bugging me. I need to do one of these while I'm on a long. One of these days, that would be. The technology exists, right? I'll I'll do that. I'll I'll return a favor. I'll call you from in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> That'd be great. And well, we might be doing some trips to Texas and Florida, things like that coming up. So I might be able to do yeah. live streams like this in that in that same sort of vein. Awesome, 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 awesome. All right, bud. Catch you later. Cheers. All right, cheers, Marty. Cheers, everyone. Oh, that's a lot of fun. That is a that's a ton of fun. See if, uh, see if he can figure out how to get out of the room. <laughs> yeah, he's got it. He's got it. A uh, ton of fun. ton of fun there uh, with Marty. I did look inside the park. It is so packed in there. I think uh, I would lose, lose cell reception uh, going into Yoyogi Park at this point. Um, but the it's amazing how quickly the Sakura is done. Because if you look, look here, so that's one of the Sakura trees. And it's already shed all of its... Uh, all the petals, and now it's just the uh, the, uh, the green foliage coming in. It happens so quick. Quick, if you if you blink, you'll miss it. And if you recall, two weeks ago, walked through the park, and it was just starting to bloom, and now it's already over. Two weeks later, two weeks, and that's it. Move near the Freedom Factory in Florida. I don't know where that is. Japan main cities like. Uh, Proto Blade Run. I don't know what that is. Miss you, my friend. Oh, Colette saying that. Uh, yeah, Sakura typically only lasts about 10 days all over Japan. Yeah, it's 
it, like it hits different regions at different times. But uh, Tokyo's had its uh, had its sakura. There's still some that are hanging on to some of the petals, but it's um, it's mostly over, mostly done. It's such a beautiful time of year, and uh, it's it's always I'm gonna say like the, the hardest part for me uh, coming at this time of year is going home, and then it being like 10 degrees cooler. Ugh, that's awful. <laughs> That's really that's that's hard for me. I love the heat, by the way. Um, it's funny because, uh, like, even last even last summer, the uh, in the shop, I never took my hoodie off. People were telling people were trying to say on the news it's the hottest summer ever. Now, the summer before, it reached 40, 46 degrees in our town in Squamish, um, but. No, last summer it wasn't like that. Trish Pru with two dollars super chat. Tennessee has no state tax. I keep hearing this. Isn't that where Tim Pool is in Tennessee? I don't. I'm not sure. I'll tell you one thing that my uh, my wife is worried about because it, it it's all over the news here in Japan. Is that in America there's um, there's a Asian racism problem. There's uh, a lot of racism towards Asians, but they they don't like to they don't like to mention where that where that that racism is coming from. Um, yeah, it's not largely um, you know your country towns. To say, uh, but that that's a big consideration for my wife, obviously, and it's just a consideration for me. Um, we don't want to go where any any of that stuff is going on, because uh, apparently it's been a big issue in the United States. But yeah, it's all over the news. It's all over the news on that uh, in Japan. Okay, we're gonna be going back through here. This again, Harajuku. Central area. I don't know if I'm. Uh, am I getting myself into something? We'll go for a walk down here. Cherry blossoms. Yeah, yeah. That's the. Uh, that's what Sakura is. Cherry blossoms. Yeah, it's Saturday busy time, so <laughs> we'll see. Uh, Clyde, too. They ever call you Round Eye? Nah, I've never heard that. But I think that's like a. I think that was invented by Round Eyes. <laughs> I don't. Think that's the thing. So they they have a word for foreigners. It's uh, gaijin. But it, it, it's actually a derivative of the term gai, gaikokuji. So, like, um, gaikoku is like a other country uh, people. Jin is the uh, people. Divide and conquer. Tim Pool gets swatted a lot. It's bad. It's a bad problem. Well, Tim Pool's uh, pretty pretty big. And what's crazy? Well, I gotta I gotta be careful about it because I piss off a lot of the same kind of people as Tim Pool. So I I piss I piss off you know obviously like the tards, right? But then I also piss off people who are. I'm gonna go get a drink. Uh, people get mad. What do they say? Fence sitting, you know that kind of thing, and uh, you know. People will get pissed off that I'm not I'm not extreme in my opinions. Something's going on here. <laughs> I don't know if there's a show coming. I don't I have no idea. Um, but yeah, a lot of people uh, are pissed off at Tim Pool for the same thing, for not for not having ex such extreme opinions. What do I get? What am I gonna get? The options here. I kind of just want a tea or a water. A little change pouch. What should I get? Is there really even water? 
Okay. Natural pure water. Take that. Uh, Terry, with a two dollar super chat. Want Canadians to leave? Don't give them satisfaction. Yeah. <laughs> don't give them a break. Don't don't give them a a, a better option. Uh, don't give them. What's happening in Canada? It's, it's a shame. I don't I don't want to leave. I love I love the town that I live in. But and it and it's it's turn it's become a trend. It's a thing that's happening in my town. Uh, especially when it comes to uh, mechanics, all the shops are losing guys slowly because the cost of living is just driving it, driving people out. Lose, lose your rental property. Oh, gotta go. Can't stick around. We've lost so many people. We have a um, we have a great guy uh, named Daniel at our shop. And he's from he's from Chile, and he wanted to come to. Come to Canada and make a life with his girlfriend. And they just looked at the reality of the situation and went, yeah, let's just go back to Chile. Way easier to make a life. And uh, so that's what they're doing. They're doing. Right around right around the time that I'm going to get kicked out of my place, they're leaving. Uh, I, I know a bunch of guys at different shops that have, uh, have left. All, around, all for the same thing. Uh, we should all boycott... In front of where you live, boycott what? <laughs> like, were you a customer? It's a uh, strawberry fetish. I just think that's hilarious. And then, of course, there's a lot of foreigners snapping shots of that. Oh, I'm going to stop and get a little swig of my water. you abandon Canada, we'll have no reason to care about your channel. Uh, if, if that's how you feel about it, obviously, I mean, everyone has a right to feel the way they want to feel. If I have to leave Canada, it doesn't stop me from talking about Canadian issues and what's going on in Canada. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the thing. Uh, <laughs> somebody with a $4 super chat and the message uh, re retracted. Okay. Thank you for the super chat. Appreciate it. Uh, can you say he do? -do? I don't know. Did I say it right? <laughs> they have a lot of these catch guys from. Uh, I want to say Nigeria. I think that's the accent that I'm hearing. Uh, get it, get it in these popular neighborhoods. I'm not sure exactly what what they're after, but um, a, a lot, a lot are known for scams. Uh, a lot of them, you, you get you get pulled into a, a club on a promise, and then you get strong armed robbed. So that's that's the thing to watch out for if you're uh, if you're in Tokyo. There's a lot of that. And that says, I wouldn't abandon you, Clyde. <laughs> Would love to follow and see how things are are where you get where you go. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, I mean everybody's got their prerogative. Wow, it's busy. Move to Chile. I'd, I'd consider that, actually. No joke. Um, learning another language, though? Uh, that's hard. It was really hard learning Japanese. To, to have to learn Spanish. <laughs> Oof. It's a beautiful language, though. I do, I do like uh, the way Spanish sounds. And with, with a little bit of... Um, like the French 
that I had to take for grammatical French and stuff in school as a kid. I think it might it might be helpful to understanding how to how to put sentences together in Spanish, but yeah, wow. I'm trying to trying to figure that out. Another language. Ugh. I don't think I could do that. Wow, we're at a crawl. We gotta find a back eddy. <laughs> gotta find back eddies in the in the crowd. It's kind of uh like the same technique that uh, salmon used for swimming up the waterfalls. <laughs> Off the beaten path. Yeah, we can go a bit off the off the path. I'm gonna head back towards uh, where we started, though. So it's always a good starting point. Yeah, Easter Island. Yeah, there we go. That's where I'll move. If, if you want no neighbors and seclusion, that's 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 the best place to be. <laughs> All right, here we go. So this week, there was uh, there was another thing that happened on Twitter um, that I thought was, I mean, funny, funny, but. Uh, I, I, I did get annoyed and it, it and it led for me it led me to make a post that where hilarity kind of ensued. Um, I don't know what triggers it, but every once in a while I'll just put out a, a tweet or something, and then the you, you guys know it you guys know it, it <laughs> if you've experienced it before, but the PPC bras will just inhabit your your replies and make make blanket accusations that are just completely untrue and have no basis in like let, let's just say um they'll they'll erect they'll erect this like straw man of you and then and then proceed to like beat up on that straw man and while, while you just like sit there and watch it happen <laughs> it's hilarious i mean i've been accused by pbc bras of all kinds of stuff, being a shill for the conservative party, uh, being um, this or that, having this opinion, having that opinion. Um, if you wanted to know my opinion, you could just tune into my show and you can you can learn about what <laughs> what I <laughs> what I think. And and it's funny because I've been in spaces and stuff with with some of them, and uh, largely quiet until until it gets to the 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 uh, the replies. It's. Uh, I think it's a Twitter thing. I think it's a Twitter thing. I used to call it um, having an intellectual conversation with an angry chihuahua behind a chain link fence. That's um, <laughs> that's what it feels like anyway. On on that, uh, PPC is bar brought to you by the WEF. Yeah. So uh, here's here's the thing. I I sympathize with with people who who you know who want. The PPC to be a thing, um, but you know these these are the people of no compromise. These are the people of of you know just kind of denying the fact that there is another entire demographic of the population in Canada that agree with the premise of that. And rather than rather than trying to win over people that disagree with them, what they'll try to do is just shame you and give you purity tests. In your own community, and and we're talking. I'm talking about like a lot of the things that PPC people talk about. I agree with, but if I don't if I don't toe completely down that line, then it's like you're unpure. We must attack this guy, and I think that's just such a giant waste of time. Instead of going after I don't know the the new Democrats, or instead of going after uh, liberals. Or instead of you know even approaching people who are maybe new to politics, and a lot of a lot of people are new to politics, a lot of people are new to the whole concept, tend to lean lefty, and it's because of the, the school system, it's because of all of that. Why not why not target those people? Why not why not try to um, get in touch with those people instead? They they want to find people that mostly agree with them and. And then try to own them in the comments or whatever the case. It's it's ridiculous. So 
I put out a tweet that was a bit of a, uh, <laughs> I guess I was, I was goading it on. Because it's great, because it's, it's like, oh, I, I can figure out who uh, I, I, I want to make sure. I, I can figure out who I don't want to follow, you know what I mean, of all the people that I might be following. Uh, but I put out a tweet saying, uh, what, what exactly did I say? I said, you know, because I can't, I can't give my opinion on the internet without the PPC bras flooding my, look at that car, without, without flooding my, uh, my replies, I, uh, I said, let's have a riddle. Let's do a riddle. And I said, an elected PPC member of parliament, the Easter Bunny, and the Tooth Fairy walked into a bar, and the bartender says, <laughs> and the replies were hilarious. The replies were hilarious, because obviously the answer is, uh, the, the bartender said nothing, because none of those people exist. Sorry for any of you that believed in uh, the Tooth Fairy, but uh, Daniel, the $5 Super Chat, that was me who reacted to the $4 Super Chat, or retracted the $4 Super Chat, I don't know what happened there. I'm watching from the Philippines, originally from uh, New West, British Columbia. Oh, well, thank, thank you for the, the super chat. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. So, yeah, I put out, I put out this, uh, this thing. You know, cause, I mean, at the end of the day, here's what it is. The, the PBC, they started off with a uh, good concept. Good concept. Let's... Let's have some. Let's have another alternative to you know this essentially two-party system. You know you have your new Democrat liberals, and you have the conservative. Why don't we have another option and try to make the conservatives more conservative because they seem to be going left. Well, the truth of the matter is, is that the freedom convoy happened, and a lot of the left elements of the the Conservative Party are gone. Are they, they? A lot of them, not all of them, but it's it's trending in the right direction. So that that makes it that makes that makes it so a lot of people find it kind of redundant that the PBC is even a thing anymore. And the strategy is more a case of okay, well let's um, let's put more pressure on the Conservatives to be more of what they say they are, conservative. And it's been working. And, and it's it's largely proving successful because the, the paradigm shift is happening and the Overton window is shifting and the conservatives are reluctantly, but doing it, they're coming along. And I think, I think that's a good a move in the right direction. But there's a lot of people that are invested into this thing. And of course, Maxime Bernier is invested in it. And, uh, I mean, he's, it's a pride thing for him, I think, in my opinion. He's not, he's not going to go back to the Conservative Party. And he still wants a career as a politician. So, <laughs> career as a uh, never-elected politician may, might be the case. Now, I've made this argument many times that, you know, follow what's happening in the United States, for example. Like, one of, one of the... One of the politicians that really got me into um, the idea of politics and even into the idea of Austrian economics and libertarianism, liberty in general. What is this a lineup for? Holy cow, it's a lineup all the way up the street for a thing. We'll find out. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was uh, Ron Paul. Ron Paul got me into the, the whole idea of it. I was following him very closely when he was running for... Uh, for the ticket for the uh, Republican Party. I think it was back in 04, some time ago. Ron Paul's great. Ron Paul was great. And, you know, he, he got me a lot more focused on uh, even even common, commenting on any of this stuff. <coughs> Am I losing my voice? Oh, I just need some more of that water. Yeah, I love Ron Paul. Yeah, Ron Paul was great. And his son's fantastic too, Rand Paul. And the the idea that I'm getting at here is Ron Paul for a lot of years was part of the Libertarian Party. 
And he did a lot of work with the Libertarian Party, put a ton of effort into the Libertarian Party, and largely went nowhere. And he was most effective when he joined the Republican Party and he was elected as a congressman. And in that position, he was able to do a lot of good stuff. And his son, Rand Paul, as a senator in the Republican Party, has been able to do a lot of great stuff too. So there's, there's this idea that, oh, well, you can't do anything with this, uh, the machine, right? They call it the, the uniparty. Well, there's, there's proof right there that you can, even, even if it is a uniparty. And the Republican Party is that. It, it, there are tons of rhinos in the, in the Republican Party. Just like they're, what do they call them, chinos? <laughs> Conservatives in, in name only in the, uh, <laughs> in the Conservative Party. Yeah, it's true. But the reality of the matter is you're probably going to have more success if you use the infrastructure that's already there rather than you know, I'm, I'm going to take my ball and go home kind of mentality. Uh, I quit. I'm making my own party. It's It doesn't seem to be working. It, it hasn't worked yet for Maxime. Um, and the the problem, too, with, with the um, since the shift is that have you ever heard the song by Sloan, Coax Me? There's a line in that song that I just love, and it's always stuck with me. Um, uh, Chris Murphy in the song sings, it's not the band I hate, it's their fans. <laughs> and, and I, oh, it's that sentiment that's just always stuck with me. The, there are so many people in the, in the, that are supporters of the, of the PPC that behave like the um what would you call it they're like they're like the jehovah's witnesses of the uh of the political movement in canada <laughs> pure puritanical you have to go along with everything that they say or they're you're the enemy it's ridiculous it's ridiculous um need to be able to have civil conversation with people that even you disagree with. And there are, there are some people, especially online, that I completely disagree with. And it's funny because a lot of these PPCers, I don't fundamentally disagree with them. I, I just might disagree on this or that. And largely, it's strategy. It's a strategic thing about uh, who to vote for and, and whatnot. So it's, it's sad, actually. It's sad to watch happen. Um, but, you know, people, people say, oh, it's a tired old trope, the, um, the idea of uh, the PPC, divide, you know, dividing the vote. Um, is it? <laughs> but not, not only that, it's, it's divisive. It's divisive in the, uh, in the conservative movement. And here's the thing. I never associated myself with conservatism. I've always seen myself as liberty oriented, like a classical liberal, uh, libertarian. So, you know, conservatives are allies in this at this point, but I'm not, I'm not particularly tied to that. But it looks like, it looks like they're moving in the right direction. Not only that, they, they, they seem a lot more malleable. And, you know, malleable can be a flaw or it can be a, a good characteristic, depending on where, where you're at on this. Because, I mean, I would hate a conservative party to come in and, and be so, so set in their ways that they're, they're not going to have any discussion with uh, my purview, for example. But, but that's that's what the PPC guys are asking for. They're asking for a group that that's that's completely unwavering, completely unwavering. Wow, that train's loud. <laughs> train's going above. Um, completely unwavering. Is that really what you want, or would you want a group that you know they're they're in the right direction ideologically? I mean, like 
when I listen to Pierre Polyev speak, I don't think, I don't hear that as pandering. I hear it as like, he's talking about, he's talking about economics. He's talking about, uh, you know, social uh, phenomenons, these kind of things from his understanding of it. And he sounds like, okay, well, I have a good idea of where that's, where we got to go from there. By, by saying you have a good idea of where to go from there, it doesn't say, it's not saying my way or the highway, you know what I mean? You're not, you're not telling people that you're, you're unbudging. Oh, <laughs> we're walking by that place from the last time where they have a show going on. We got a, a show happening here. I don't know if it's a TV show. <laughs> everybody, everybody, they say hi. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh, I love it. I love it. I just love the way it is here. But yeah, that, that's the thing. Like, if if you're so stuck in your ways that like you'll find somebody that you agree with on ninety percent of things, and then they they disagree with you on that little ten percent, and you're like, nope, I can't have you. <laughs> we can't. We can't even be. I, I'm gonna attack you every time you post something on Twitter. Blah, blah. It's like, whoa, chill. How about we focus on all the things that we agree on? And yeah, we disagree on like these small things. And we can work our way through those. And we can discuss that. And we can talk about it. And maybe we just end up disagreeing with each other. That's fine. But I think, I think focusing on agreement is a way better stance to, uh, to, to begin from entirely. And this is what I try to do with people, especially on, on the left. Like, like I'm talking people, and again, you know, I don't, I don't fault people that are just new to talking about political stuff. And a lot of people are just getting into it. A lot of people are just getting into uh, political, political chats and talking because of the, the current situation in Canada. Like, wow, okay, things have gotten really crazy, uh, really crappy for a lot of people in the government is just in your life all the time, so people want to talk about it. Where, you know, have they really thought out their ideas? Have they? Really, maybe not. Maybe not. But they're coming from a place of probably indoctrination. If they, you know, I went to the public school system, or even went to college, then it was even worse. So tread lightly, man. Don't don't just like as soon as somebody says something that you you disagree with, like. You know, like, oh, I don't know. You know, because a lot of people have this stupid sentiment that, like, UBI would be a good thing. That's a stupid sentiment, in my opinion. But tread lightly. Just say, like, okay, well, how does that work out? Okay, so we're going to give $2,100 a month, which works out to be, like, I can't remember the numbers. It's something ridiculous. Like, something like $20 trillion. I'm going to go up this way. Like twenty trillion dollars a year. It's more than we ever spent ever. But we're just gonna do that and somehow that's gonna work out. See, so just walk people down the road that they're that they're saying we should walk down. Just do it. Because I love how Jordan Peterson talks about this. We we have the ability to uh, a forethought so that our di ideas can die so that we don't. <laughs> you know? So take take that thought experiment and say, okay, well, we're just gonna give we're just going to give away $20 trillion a year so people can spend it. Well, what, what, what's going to happen then, first off? Well, we're just going to overinflate the currency immediately, and then the currency will be worthless, and then those dollars that you're, the dollar dues that you're giving to people are worth nothing. Oh, okay. Well, that's kind of redundant right away. And if people disagree with you, they say, okay, well, let's walk through it. Let's walk through it. We'll talk about this. You know? Instead of just throwing them out the window and saying, Oh, you're an idiot, blah, go, you know, uh, give him some stupid insult on Twitter. Funny thing I find is uh, the insults on Twitter, they're really there to appease the person that's throwing out the insult. And it's like, wow, you, you really need that. You really need that right now, don't you? You need that moment, that moment that... Uh, Get that dopamine hit. <laughs> Owning somebody on the interwebs. I just, uh, yeah, I, I don't need it. 
and the funny thing is, like, uh, maybe my Twitter hasn't blown up that much because I, I talk to people like I talk to them in real life on Twitter. It's funny. And I don't like to just throw out insults. Um, I, I will insult people, don't get me wrong, if, it, if they're deserving of it because they've been insulting me or whatever. But I, I won't be the first to throw insults out like that. I, I try to uh, I try to talk to people as if I'm talking to them, you know, face to face. <laughs> One trillion per year for UBI. There you go. One trillion per year for UBI. I mean, that's that would just destroy the economy immediately. Immediately destroy the economy. Now, of course, we don't want that. And, of course, the people who are advocating for it are just wrongheaded. They're just, they're just thinking. They're thinking. They're not. Sorry. They're not thinking. They're not thinking of the economic repercussions. Because, you know, there are a lot of people that just have very basic uh, ideas of what <laughs> economies are. I was, I was really blown away at one point. I worked with a guy. And he was, you know, he was a... He went through college, trained as a technician, very smart guy, figure out intricate systems and how they work, diagnose stuff. And one day, we were just having a beer, and he says, isn't it weird that people have to work for a living? <laughs> like, what? It kind, of, it kind of shocked me. I was like, I, like what? 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 I, I, I asked him, like, what do you even mean by that? Well, isn't it weird that people have to work for a living? Like, you have to go to a job and, and do a thing. Why can't we just, like, have everything for free? <laughs> and, I, and I had to, like, I had to break it down to its basics. To its basics. I'm saying, I'm telling you, he was not a dumb guy. We're not talking about a dumb person here. So I'm like, okay, well, let's break it down to its basics. So, like, without society, where are we? Why, why, what would you be doing? You know, you're out in the woods. You're, you're living out in the, in the woods. What are you doing? Well, you're every day trying your best to do what you can to collect enough calories to survive the day. That's it. That's work. That's work. And then, you know, <laughs> then... You might, you might, if you find yourself having some a bit of free time, a bit of free time, you might try to, you know, build a shelter because that you're gonna need that. You're gonna need some other things, perhaps some time-saving devices, uh, something like, um, I don't know, a trap, for example, so you don't have to like hunt all day. You just put a trap out and hopefully catch something. There's a name for that. It's called capital. And then we started going down the whole thing, you know, okay, well, you know, you got to survive and then you run, run into other people and they're trying to survive too. And so, you know, without, without, you know, killing them and taking all their stuff, what would, what would you, what else would you do? Oh, well, I'd trade with them. Uh, I have some of my stuff, I have some of your stuff, blah, blah, blah. But you got to work for the things, you know, you got to get those things. So at the end of the day, why do we, why do we have to work even in a societal you know, we're, we're seemingly is abundance everywhere because it doesn't it doesn't just grow on trees. <laughs> At the end of the day, everyone's got to contribute somehow, or else no one will contribute at all. That whole it really is that concept of UBI, and that's what would happen with the UBI, which is unfortunate. Is and it was we did we ran this experiment we really did with um, with CERB. We told a bunch of people, you don't have to work. You can just stay home and get a paycheck. And in fact, if you work, you won't get that paycheck. So just stay home. And what did what a lot of people do? Well, I'll tell you what a lot of people did. They didn't just stay home. There was a bunch of people that did stay home. But I know a lot of people that the first thing that they did was they figured out a way that they could do the work that they were already doing, but do it under the table so that they could double dip and get a paycheck in both ways. Yeah, not kidding. Oh, okay, so not only are we gonna 
disincentivize people to do work, but the ones that are willing to do work, they'll do it plus fraud. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's awful. And then what, what happens from there? Well, a lot of people look at that and they'll look at it with resentment and they'll say, oh, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Why would I, why would I put all that work in? Well, all these other people aren't putting the work in. Yeah, it's just, it breeds animosity throughout society. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to bring that about. Anyway, I'm going on a rant. Holy cow. Well, now they'll come back. Clyde. The real men will fight. You can, oh, this is good. That's cute. You can run a YouTube account and show the CPC. Oh, it's all oh, ferryman. Oh, right, right. Fair enough. Um, you can, you're going to what? The, you're the real men. They're going to fight and, uh, and quote uh, what George Rockwell. God, man. Oh, man, you guys have gone somewhere else entirely. I really feel bad for that. It's, um, yeah, the diagonal flag has become the slippery slope. It's really sad. Ferryman's a troll. No, I know. I know he is. It's, it's hard to know when he's serious, uh, but some of the stuff he's been saying is seriously... Uh, what I would say is, like, it's not so much harmful to a bunch of trolls. Like, that, that's, that's, I mean, whatever. You want to you wanna damage your own reputation, that's fine. It's the um, putting yourself in with other people and then, and then uh, in, a, in a situation where you know that uh, the, uh, <laughs> the left loves to use guilt by association, become that association uh, to destroy all of the people around you that have been doing good things. It's, um, that's, that's another, that's another one. Takes a cake. It's called group therapy. We need to come together. I absolutely agree with that. Yeah, come together. What part of Tokyo are you in? Right now I'm in Shibuya. I'm just walking kind of off the beaten path. Um, which turns into the, the beaten path. So if you look behind me, uh, this road is called Sentagai, and it goes right into the busiest area, which we're going to be walking into really, really shortly here. Oh wow, yeah, the the chat's getting spicy now. I love <laughs> that's something else. Anyway, I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not worried about you know words like that. It's um a typical you know because I see it a lot. So I've had it I've had it now. So both PPC bras and uh, and the uh, I don't even know what you call them diagonal uh, slippery slopes. Have, have both come after me and and it's because you know I want to engage with the, the political system in the country and and that's fine if you know if you disagree with that um, but instead it's become a okay well you know you're not a man you know <laughs> I love those you're not a man if you don't uh, uh, say really really awful things about particular racial groups it's, yeah I'm, I'm not I'm not gonna buy into that Amen. Yeah. Do I know he gave he gave grew up? I do. I do. Uh, we were close to there last week. We went to um, went to Shinjuku. Me and my buddy Haynes. That was fun. Such good food in the area. Really good food. And today, today, 
I'm, I'm meeting up with Haynes again. He's uh, he's a friend of mine, and we used to work together when I lived here in Japan. And uh, I don't know if you guys are hearing that. I hope that doesn't hope that doesn't kill the stream, the copyrighted music. But uh, we're going up for ramen. I'm really looking forward to that. There's this really, really good ramen shop uh, close to where he lives in um, a neighborhood called Daimon. And it's Daimon because they have this big, uh, big entrance to uh, a giant uh, temple that's there. It's fantastic. Slides in the future. That's right. I'm... Uh, I'm streaming to you from tomorrow morning, <laughs> Saturday. It's, it's just afternoon now, so it's uh, tomorrow afternoon. Agreed, don't give the trolls attention. Oh, well, I, gave, I gave them attention, and I gave them the attention they deserved, and that was it. Yeah, if our ancestors could survive the depression and rebuild, yeah, we could do that. Yeah, I rode my DeLorean to Japan. Yeah, I wish I wish it was that easy. So we're we're gonna be traveling back home uh, day after tomorrow, and holy cow, it's um it's an ordeal. It really is a ordeal to get across the ocean with two children. <laughs> it's, it's a big deal. So that we have to go to uh, Narita Airport, which is outside of Tokyo. It's it's uh, it's more towards Chiba. So it's an hour away. So getting you have to get there and then go through all the security and all that rigmarole. And that's uh, that's that. So it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was the announcement. Please, uh, please don't use your smartphone while walking, like I'm doing right now and like a lot of people are doing through this crossing which is one of the busiest crossings probably on the planet it's crazy here amazingly though like people people are so cordial with each other there's no like people bumping into each other and saying hey what are you doing no, nobody's getting in any fights or anything like that it's great it's uh it's fantastic in Shibuya, that's such a crazy area. Yeah. And we're going back to uh, Hachiko, where we, well, not where the stream started, but where I started with Marty. So again, the, the story, the story of Hachiko. Oh, one second, Penny D with a ten dollars super chat. I totally agree on the UBI. Uh, back, not a dumb guy. Uh, back to not a dumb guy. He's right. Man has really strayed for, strayed from his natural path. Well, that's that's what I had to say. Is that you know we strayed from the natural path, and the natural path is the is the idea that you know. nothing's a, there's no free lunch like this there's no such thing as a free lunch you you've gotta you've gotta do your your part of the bargain now what what's gonna be your part of the bargain i don't know that's that's up to you that's up to you to find and that's what that's what i really i really um admire about the the market economy is that people can find different little niches uh and fill those niches and it's it's fantastic. What's Canada? Two hundred years ish. Yeah, earn your stuff. Yeah. And at least, uh, well, I use all kinds of fulfillment in that. 
PVC bros are annoying. Yeah, I've been learning that. Uh, Dai Feichu with a five dollar super chat. I love ja I love Japanese tools like Vessel. If I were there, I would bring back some home. Please tell me you got at least one. I did. I did. I got some. I got some tools. Um, maybe not as many as I would have liked. Because, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of good stuff. Uh, Waniska with a ten dollar super sticker. Thank you so much, Waniska. Appreciate that. See in Japan. Lived there for nine years. Loved it. I lived here for three years and I loved it. And uh, it was difficult. We moved back home to Canada. Well, I say back home. For my wife, Tokyo is back home. But, um, yeah, we moved. Have you already gone to Akiba? I haven't. I haven't been to Akiba this trip. And I was wondering if maybe I should go there during the day today. Maybe. I might do that. I might do that. Um, I'm meeting up with my buddy Haynes, as I said. But that's he's working today, so that'll be around like 5-ish. I'll visit, but I'll never live. Yeah, that's fine. It's a great place to visit. Awesome. And uh, this area is undergoing a bunch of construction. Our local borough is also going under some crazy construction. Lots of new stuff coming up. How long will your flight be? It's uh, typically about nine, nine or ten hours. How many miles will you walk today? So last time I did a live stream, I ended up walking. I walked a bit more than today, um, and I walked 20, 20 something kilometers that day. But I did a bunch of walking afterwards. So I don't know. I think I think this uh, this one's got to be around ten k. I probably walked around ten k. <laughs> I love I love the trolls like you're doing good. That that must mean that what I'm doing is something something other than it just not being good is wrong with it. Oh, that's awful, man. Uh it's an awful way of looking at yourself as a victim. Really, really sorry. Sorry that you see yourself as a victim. I'm walking here. Yeah. No, nobody's nobody ever does that. It's it's crazy. I mean people people are just cordial in general. Everybody's kind of looking out for everybody. Uh, you can visit Akihabara. Big camera. Well, there's 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 a big camera in every every town. There's there's one just just across the way there. Uh, and they're all pretty much the same. They're jealous, but yeah, I know. Uh, big camera is all over Tokyo. Yeah, it's well, it's a big franchise. It's kind of like um, I don't want to say Walmart because Walmart's kind of like shitty products. It, it's it's better products than that, but it's like a department store sort of thing where you, where you'll get like you get top notch stuff. Insurance would be too much at our age to visit Japan. Um, no, insurance isn't that much. Are you talking about like overseas medical insurance? No, it's pretty reasonable. Have you been to Sandwich? Sandwich is on the island, correct? No, I haven't. All right. Have you been to Tokyo Hands? I walked by one uh, about 20 minutes ago. Yeah, Tokyo Hands. Another another department store. There are so many department stores. I'd say that the, the Walmart of, of Japan is uh, is Don Quixote. That's the thing. Mmm, ramen. Yeah, I love ramen. Also, oh, one of the one of the best fast foods if you're just like you're in for a cheap bite and you want it uh, is is any one of the uh, Donburi places. So Yoshinoya. Uh, Tsukiya, uh, Matsuya. Uh, it's just so cheap. <laughs> it's so unbelievably cheap. You know, you know, three, four dollars, and you have like a quick little meal, and you're in and out, and it's fast, and it's it's just all about the convenience.
All right. I wanted to just answer a few more questions before ending the stream here. Uh, again, we're at Hachiko here, the, the, the meeting place. And we're going to end this here. Long work day for me today and 11.30 p.m. here. Good night. Clyde and gang, yeah, good night. Have a great, have a great time. Oh wow, yeah, people are people are <laughs> giving the trolls what for in the chat. But hey, it is what it is. If you uh you you, you put yourself in that kind of situation, you, you you walk yourself into it. Anyway. So I probably won't hear from you guys or you won't hear from me until we get back into Canada. We're going to have a couple of more days uh, before we do that. So it's been fun chatting with everybody and uh, probably probably go uh, do voice voice only chat in the uh, in the discord. But I, I, I didn't walk until my phone died this time. So <laughs> it'll be it'll be possible. Uh, Clyde, thanks. Have a good trip home. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, yeah, anyway, it was a really good stream. Thank you all for joining. Um, where is the thing to turn it off? New, new to this format. Oh, uh, nope, that's not what I was trying to do. No, I think I just hit that, and then I'm out of here. All right. Uh, safe travels, everybody. Have fun. And uh, I might see you in the Discord.